Live from our hurricane headquarters with real-time analysis from some of the nation's top meteorologists, this is Tracking the Tropics. We have arrived at the final week of the 2022 hurricane season, but with Thanksgiving, Christmas, and the holiday season right around the corner, the very last thing we want is a hurricane, a holiday hurricane. So with Thanksgiving being tomorrow, we are thankful, Rebecca, to report in your hurricane headquarters that conditions are highly unfavorable for a postseason storm as we look ahead to the holiday fun. Hey there, folks. JB here with you live in your hurricane headquarters on tracking the tropics. We're going to explain exactly why conditions are unfavorable with WFLA meteorologist Rebecca Barry and joining us friend of the program you might remember of course WIAT CBS 42 morning meteorologist Dave Nussbaum joining us from Birmingham Alabama can't wait to talk to Dave and reintroduce him to our audience we are talking about the odds and the chances of there being a storm but very uh, looking ahead to December and January but very fortunate of course that we don't have anything to talk about Rebecca when it comes to this Thanksgiving holiday weekend. The tropics are quiet. The tropics are quiet. And, you know, we talked a lot about how this season sea surface temperatures, especially with that unusually warm water up near Europe, was a lot like 2013, where we only had two hurricanes, but the last tropical system faded the first week of December. And so we did see kind of a late start to the season. We had two November storms, basically. And so this, I was a little bit worried that we were going to have, you know, even a fish storm out there making its way through our, our forecast as we close out hurricane season, but things could not look quieter right now in terms of the tropics. You can see that we're, we've really transitioned in weather patterns to our fall weather pattern globally, and that's making for the cold front sweeping across the, the U.S. right now, and that's helping keep things a lot, pretty quiet. And it's also setting it up that anything, if anything did develop, it would be pushed out to sea and kept out to sea because of those cold fronts. And so what we're looking at right now is tropical wind shear, and so where we're seeing the red, that's high areas of shear. And so where we're not seeing the red in those bluer areas, that's low areas of shear. And so shear tears storms apart. Uh, hurricanes need vertical development to stay strong and to form. And when you have the high level winds that kind of tears the top of that storm off, it either keeps it from forming or keeps it weak. And so I would like to see a little bit more shear in the mid latitudes there. You can see where we have kind of a quiet zone there with not much shear, but very, very high shear just to the north and just to the south of that area. But the good news is we're just not seeing anything on, on the long, long term forecast models that's even trying to form and the the wind flow in general is looking pretty positive as we make our way over the next couple of days and into the next couple of weeks as well. Of course, we always talk about sea surface temperatures when we're talking about formation possibilities, and we still have very warm sea surface temperatures to the south of Cuba, but everything to the north of Cuba has really started to cool down a little bit. And it takes a while for sea surface temperatures to change. The water cools off and warms up much more slowly than land and air do. And so it takes a while, a couple of cold fronts for us to start to see those sea surface temperatures dropping, but we are finally starting to see that even out across the middle of the Atlantic. We're in that 82, 84 range, which isn't impossible for a storm to form, but it's less like less likely than when you get over 86 degrees. So that's another factor that's kind of working in our fact in our um, in our case to keep it quiet and keep it staying quiet, which is one of the things we like to see. Yeah, and looking here at the map, it's just very, very, very welcoming. Rebecca, yes. to see, of course, that we don't have any tropical activity of note. Let's bring in Dave. Dave, um, after, of course, a season where we had Ian and Nicole, just very fortunate yeah. to be where we are right now with one week to go in the hurricane season. Yeah, we don't need anything else. You guys have had your share down there in Florida. Uh, we got hit by Nicole here, a little bit of the uh, impact, side impact of it, if you will. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't a very, very busy season like last year or back in 2020. But uh, still, as they say, it only takes one, right? And obviously, Ian was your storm this year, and uh, the cleanup will continue. Yeah, as we look here on trackingthetropics.tv, we've got a great write-up by our team. And I want to read this here from trackingthetropics.tv. Since 1984, there have been a total of five off-season storms that have reached hurricane strength. So it's highly unlikely but it's certainly possible. And the last one was actually back in 2016. So about, uh, you know, five or six years ago when Category 1 Hurricane Alex hit Bermuda in mid-January. I'm going to bring Re Rebecca and Dave up here to talk about how it's extremely unlikely to get a storm when it's not hurricane season. But Dave, as you know, it is, in fact, possible. 
Yeah, it's it's you can't. It's so rare that that happens. I mean, Alex was obviously an anomaly there in 2016, and so uh, that one, of course, did do a little bit of some issues. Had it just coming far enough south for it to get that tropical characteristic versus a uh, kind of nor'easter type system out there. Uh, but if you guys remember back in uh, the 05 crazy season, right? We had that carryover storm. I think it was Zeta went from December into January. Uh, you know, that's that's pretty rare too to see something like that. I'm glad that we're not dealing with any record-breaking seasons in terms of that. (laughs) Um, The good news is with storms that do form during non-peak times like December, like January, a lot of times they're fish storms. A lot of times they're just out over the open Atlantic. A lot of times they're on the weak side as well. So if we did see any formation, we probably would not have to worry too much about it. It would just be kind of a gee whiz factor instead. I have it right here, Dave. Yeah, Epsilon back in 2005, and you said it was a carryover storm. You were indeed correct. It uh, formed November 29th and lasted all the way through into December 8th as a Category 1 hurricane. And then even beyond that, that season, uh, Zeta was another mm-hmm. storm, December 30th. I mean, that went into, of course, <laughs> into the new year, uh, into 2000. Uh, six from 2005 into 2006 but those storms were inconsequential because they were in the central atlantic ocean i was talking to our meteorologist lee span as well the if even if there was a a december storm to form the odds of it being a fish storm are pretty significant right rebecca we're talking about the odds of the hurricane of a hurricane forming or a tropical storm forming are significantly low but even lower if we're talking about a storm that would have impacts here in the united states especially because of where the storm could form when we start to get into our more fall winter time patterns that where the warm where the sea surface temperatures are warm enough where the shear is low enough and the fact that we are all we've transitioned our pattern across the u.s and we're getting those cold fronts you know routinely diving down through the southeast even if one does form and start to head towards the u.s it's more likely that they will be headed off at the past by a cold front this time of the year and kept out to sea. So that's the good news. Yeah, to see those, I mean, unless you get a front that kind of stalls in the Gulf or somewhere like that, it's rare. You know, maybe the tail end of it, a low tries to form and try to move its way. But like you said, usually the wind shear is going to be too strong. These fronts are pretty strong. And uh, the odds of being anything more than a rainmaker are not really that good. And, of course, very fortunate that we don't have any storms to talk about, but we want to remind our audience that next week we are going to be, of course, talking about our season recap. We're going to be doing our 2022 uh, Atlantic hurricane season recap here on Track in the Tropics as Rebecca throws up uh, the uh, amount of storms that we have had, 14 named storms, eight hurricanes, uh, two major hurricanes. We're going to be talking a little bit about the preseason predictions, how they related to these numbers. And, of course, the big storm this season uh, was Ian, followed, of course, by Nicole. Both of those storms uh, impacting uh, the state of Florida. Uh, Dave, uh, before we wrap up this edition of Tracking the Tropics, when we look back at 2022 and we look at the lessons learned and uh, some of the storylines from the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. What do you think people are going to remember this season for? Obviously Ian, uh, but I think the big thing with that one, a lot of studies are going to be done. Um, the messaging, there was a lot of, it was certain it was going to Florida, but where exactly was going to hit the Florida Gulf coast, how it's going to go in, the strength of it as it moves up in a unique shape of Florida where the storm was going. Um, I think a lot of people will be talking about that one there. Obviously, a lot of lives were lost, and uh, most of that from flooding, surge flooding. Um, so we are hearing, I think, a lot of uh, papers, meteorological papers, and even just studies by emergency managers. How do we get the messaging better? How do we get people to say, you know what, it's a hurricane. I don't care if it's a Cat 1 or 4. You need to leave. You need to get away from the water. And I think that's one thing we'll be seeing uh, really coming out of this hurricane season. Even in the state of Florida where people feel invincible, it's so important, of course, to heed the warnings of not just the experts at the National Hurricane Center, but the local meteorologists like Dave and Rebecca that work to keep us safe uh, around the clock. And that's during hurricane season and, of course, during the off season as well. Let's remind our audience, if there happens to be a December storm, we do not want to will that into into existence. But if there was, in fact, a December storm, we're here to talk about it. Here with you on Tracking the Tropics. Give Dave Nussbaum a follow, folks, on social media. Of course, from Birmingham, Alabama, WIAT, CBS 42, our sister station here with Next Star Nation. Dave, we appreciate you coming on today. Of course, it's been great to be here, and I'm glad uh, the last half of the season's been pretty quiet. Last couple of weeks, I should say, pretty quiet. Uh, but, uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, a quiet six-month 
period with no hurricanes. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Dave. And of course, you, Rebecca, and everybody watching, wherever you are watching from, a happy holiday season to all of you. Next week, one week from today, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central, on whatever app, website, or social media platform that you're watching on right now, our Tracking the Tropics 2022 Atlantic Hurricane Season Recap. We will look back at the hurricane season that was, the lessons learned, the storms of note, of course, leading the way will be Ian and Nicole, and we'll have a conversation with you at home as to what we learned in regards to this hurricane season. For Dave, Rebecca, I'm JB. Thanks so much for joining us on Tracking the Tropics, powered by Handyman Roofing. Happy Thanksgiving, folks. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics. 